Hello, I'm Mike Storkey, President of Toastmasters International, and you're watching Tampa Bay Community Network. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government, and we've got a real treat today for you. You know, sometimes we don't have just government officials or government appointees. We do something with other organizations that are not government, but have an impact on our government, and one of them is called Toastmasters International. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. But I have with us the president of Toastmasters International, Mike Storkey. Mike, how good to see you again. It's been a number of years. Yes, Bill. Too long, actually, but I, I'm glad to be here. And by the way, he is speaking English, but it's Australian English. So we'll translate occasionally. Mike, I was saying that this is usually spotlight on government, but we do take organizations that help our government, and governments around the world, literally as some of the people will spotlight. And one of the things that I can tell you about Toastmasters International is there's a slogan in Toastmasters called Toastmasters Follows the Flag. And by that, what we're saying is that Toastmasters literally, when we have a base set up anywhere in the world, a military base, we generally have a Toastmasters organization or club on that. Is that right, Mike? That's correct. It's so important that uh, people get an opportunity to practice their communication skills. I I'm kind of interested now, you're with one of our great allies, Australia. Does the Australian military also participate in Toastmasters? Uh, yes, but not to the extent, I think, that you do in the States. Uh, we'd love them to do more. Uh, but, uh, of course, our military is considerably smaller than your military. <laughs> Everybody's military is smaller than ours, except for maybe China, who have a lot more foot soldiers. Well, exactly. And they build bases in the middle of the ocean. So, <laughs> and, and Benny Bao went over there to China when he was president and opened up China to Toastmasters. Exactly. And it's one of the, the fastest growing areas that we have currently in the organization. When Phyllis and I traveled to China, I got a chance to speak briefly at one of the Toastmasters meetings over there. And it was fabulous. Those folks are really working hard. They are, and they're very enthusiastic and very supportive of Toastmasters. What brings you to the United States right now? Well, at the moment, uh, the international president is really the roving ambassador for the organization. And at the moment, most districts around the world are having their mid-year conferences. And so it's my pleasure to visit certain selected districts uh, to fly the flag, if you like, uh, but also to encourage membership and to uh, recognise the achievements of those districts. Let's talk about what Toastmasters is. As I've always said, Toastmasters actually survives on three pillars, listening, speaking, and one more, what is that third pillar? Uh, the ability to think on one's feet. Leadership, there you go. A and those three are the most important skills that anyone can have in life, whether it be someone who's bound to the house or someone that's leading a corporation, correct? Oh, definitely. I think uh, everybody, as I've said to you before, everybody has something to say. Toastmasters gives them the means and the confidence to say it. Yeah, I, I, in full disclosure, I've been a member of Toastmasters now for almost 36, well, actually 36, going on 37 years. Everything I have, my home, my income, and even my wife has come from this organization. So I do have a vested interest in making everyone aware of how great the group is and what it can do for them. Look, it, it is, uh, most people, want to participate in their community, their family, and their business, uh, the biggest thing that holds them back is the confidence to speak up and say what they're thinking. 
And that's what Toastmasters specialises in, in giving people, individuals, the opportunity to develop their skills. Let's talk about a new Toastmaster, somebody who's watching this broadcast and says, well, you know, maybe I do um and all a lot, and maybe I, I maybe I, uh, well, but these people are so much better, and I, 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 I don't know whether I really should go to one of these club meetings, because I look silly. What would you say to that person? Well, I think they have to realise that what they see in a Toastmasters club are members that have been there for some time. I wish they could have been at that club when those professional <laughs> members first came and found it so difficult to string coherent words together because their knees were knocking and they were feeling very nervous. So uh, everybody can attain the skills to do a presentation and to speak and minimise their ums, ahs and uh, just have a confidence in their presentation. But, but it's not necessarily make a presentation either, it's everyday communications, correct? Oh, exactly. Uh, one of the biggest challenges me new members find is the thing called impromptu speaking, <laughs> or <laughs> table, table topic. topics, <laughs> where you're given a topic to talk about with no prior knowledge of the subject and expected to speak for a minute or two and make some coherent sense. Uh, I remember well when I first uh, got up to give a table topic, I was so nervous I said one word and sat down. <laughs> and to this day, I still can't remember what that one word was. Um, now people find it difficult to shut me up. <laughs> but it really is, it's all about confidence and about having the ability of knowing that you can put uh, a coherent point of view. And part of that, of course, is based, as you mentioned, listening is so important oh. in communication. And Toastmasters does teach listening, correct? It does. Unfortunately, like in the community, we have some members who still haven't mastered the <laughs> skill. But if you want to communicate well with others, you need to hear what they have to say and don't guess what they're going to say before they say it. Well, one of the things I've found interesting in a normal club meeting, the three pillars, listening, leading, speaking, are all three in almost everything we do, correct? Correct. I don't know of an efficient leader or an effective leader who isn't a good communicator. And to be a good communicator, you need to listen before you speak. Engage the brain before you engage the mouth. I, I think Table Topics is so great, and that's our impromptu speaking one. How many of you out there have thought to yourself, if I'd only said, you engaged your mouth, said something quickly without stopping to think. But you don't have to hurry to say something, right? No, no, you can, you know, there's nothing that says you can't pause and consider and reflect on what's been said before you give an, an answer. And in fact, to the person who has spoken, they appreciate someone listening to what they've said, considering what they've said, and maybe taking a second or two before they give a response. It's really interesting. Someone once told me, maybe you can help me with this, that we don't hear the last three seconds of anything anyone says because we're busy building a reply. Oh, that's true. That is true. That uh, you substitute what you think the person was going <laughs> to say rather than what the person was going to say. And often the key to their message is in the last three seconds of what they say. We'll go into more of what the program does, but I'd like to go into a little bit about Mike Storkey. Mike, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get started in Toastmasters and what do you see from it? Well, I got started in a little town in the top right-hand corner of Australia. It's a resort town with only 7,000 people, a beautiful place. During the day, you can surf, swim, snorkel, but when the sun goes down, there's very little to do socially. <laughs> so my wife and I went to Toastmasters purely to do something socially together. That was the only reason we went, and some... 26 years later, we're still members, still active, because suddenly it opened up a whole new world to us. You know, it's interesting because my wife and I are both distinguished Toastmasters, and we've been to a lot of conferences all over the world, had a great time. It's a great place for a husband and wife to have some good social time, but also to continue your education, correct? Oh, definitely. You never stop learning. That's the thing I love about Toastmasters. It's what keeps me in Toastmasters. How did you start out in Toastmasters? Were you a 
I know once upon a time you were in real estate. What kind of work were you doing when you began Toastmasters? Well, I was in real estate, as was Leslie, my wife. And in fact, we had our own agency. Um, the big, there's an arm, you see, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> never tell on yourself. Rule <laughs> one, never tell on yourself. We just found that uh, by being able to interact with people, by having more confidence when we spoke to people and developing our listening skills, it aided us in real estate. Many real estate agents like to sell you what they want to sell you and then wonder why they fail. If they could only hear what the customer is saying, they'd find a lot more success in sales. You know, that, that's really funny because I had someone trying to sell something to me the other day and I was ready to buy, but they kept selling and they kept selling and weren't hearing a word of what I was saying and I ultimately walked out. Somebody once said 40,000 Philistines are slew by the jawbone of an ass and as many sales are lost every day by the same, same weapon. And here you demilitarize that weapon. That's right. Um, we had a saying in my office that uh, when you actually asked the client to buy, the next person who spoke was going to be the purchaser. <laughs> and you didn't want it to be the salesman. And that's the hardest thing. They keep talking and talking and talking and they talk themselves out. Let's look at Toastmasters International. We, I know we have over 220,000 people in the organization. Maybe it's even bigger than that. 345,000 now. Really? Where yeah. did those other 120 sneak in from? Uh, <laughs> places like India, China uh, and Asia are fast growing districts. And also Europe is starting to catch on with the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, the demilitarization, if you like, of many of the Eastern European countries. Clubs are expanding there at a very fast rate. Uh, Indians especially are really, really taking to this program. I know I spoke over there at one of the area conferences and it was fabulous. Those folks were geniuses in doing the things that we wanted them to do. It was really a matter of a lot of hard work on their part, taking it seriously. Oh, they do. Um, not only do, I think a lot of them join originally to develop their English capabilities. However, once they're in the organization, they see all the other things that it can do for them. And yes, they're very, very avid Toastmasters. What do we see for Toastmasters around the world? Is it continuing to grow? Uh, did the economic times have something to do with the growth? Obviously, it, with almost 120,000 more Toastmasters than I thought were there, things are really growing very well. And I think it will continue to do so. There are so many markets we're not even in at the moment. We've just started in Brazil. Our penetration into South America has been virtually non-existent. So, really? yep. So it's great to see us going into Brazil. In um, Africa, we were in the uh, south, southern African states, but the middle of Africa, we hadn't uh, got into. That's starting to develop in Nigeria, particularly. I met two ladies that were uh, district governors or area governors or something from the Horn of Africa there, yes. who came to Tampa for the board meeting. Yep. It, it's expanding worldwide, but the biggest growth at the moment is if you look at Europe, as I mentioned, uh, they were two districts, they're now going into six districts. That's the expanse. So we're seeing um, places like Turkey, Greece, uh, the Slavonic countries. So there's a huge expansion there. And of course, let's hope in the future we can expand in Russia. Um, that would be great to see as well. Well, there's lots of room for us to expand. And they don't have to do it in English either, is that correct? Uh, no, but most of the material that we have for leadership is still in English. Um, with the new technological advances where it doesn't have to be printed material, which has been one of the big drawbacks in having many languages. Uh, digitally, if you can download in your own language, oh, yeah. we'll make it so much easier. But that uh, has restricted to a certain degree, but we're overcoming that at the moment. What can people expect if I'm listening to this broadcast and I say, you know, I really want to be a better communicator and I'm willing to put a little effort into it. What can people expect if they walk into a club meeting? Well, hopefully when they walk in, they feel safe, they feel secure and they feel amongst friends. 
we always say that the difference between our organisation and what you learn about leadership and communications is it isn't that you pay a large amount of money for a weekend seminar, maybe walk on hot coals, and then <laughs> get burned three months later, forget what you learned. Exactly. Toastmasters gives you the opportunity to continually practice in a safe environment where it's safe to fail in a club meeting. If you're not failing, you're not learning. Well, exactly. You learn far really? more from making a mistake than not making a mistake. But that's the difference. And it's got to be enjoyable. The secret is it must be fun while you're doing it. And nobody forces anyone, when you go to a meeting, to do anything. You go sit there and sit like a bump on a log if you want to get a feel for it. And you can come back several times or a number of times. Exactly. Correct? Exactly. Nobody's going to say, now, here, let me, let me get you a membership here. I'm going to twist that arm. You Although learn. there are some, some clubs that are a little more, I want you in. But I think the big thing is you do it at your own pace. It's a self-development program, and you get to develop as quickly as you want to. The only thing I'd stress is you only get out of any organisation what you are prepared to put into it. So if you're going to pay a membership and join, that's a voluntary decision. But once you make the commitment in order to get value for your money, you need to put in the effort. I totally agree with you. And it's important to understand that we'd love for you to be a part of the program. Really would, because I know it will benefit you. At my age and where I'm at, it's not going to change my life one way or another if you join or it won't change Mike's life, but it will change the world if you become a better communicator for the world we have to live in, correct? Exactly. Um, one of the catchphrases we use is Toastmasters is not about making better Toastmasters. It's about making better people who can take the skills they learn in Toastmasters to their family, their career, and to their community. And don't we need better leaders? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've hit us right in the middle of an election cycle. <laughs> yes, I think that answer is a, a resounding yes, no matter what spectrum you stand on. Exactly. We do need leadership, and leadership is important, and I think it's important to understand the way a club works. It's not like you go to a seminar. Would you like to explain how a club actually works, the various positions in a club meeting? Well, certainly. Um, we have usually three or four prepared speeches where you are given a program that develops specific skills. You pick the topic. Um, we also have, as we said, table topics, the impromptu speaking. I'd like to think it's the most popular part, but when you see members getting under the desk, <laughs> <laughs> the, don't pick me, don't pick me. We also have business sessions. But, but on the other hand, after you've been for a while, you hear this one, you say, pick me, I want oh, that yes. one. <laughs> We have business sessions, how to conduct a business session, how to move emotions, simple things that affect your everyday life. If you're on a sporting club or in a school support club, you need to be able to express your opinions to maximise your contribution to that organisation. Toastmasters gives you the basic skills to do that. Uh, they also have social events. It's not just about communication and leadership. It's also about interaction with each other, which is so important. And then there is the leadership aspects. We have club officer roles. We have meeting roles, which rotate. So people get the opportunity to be a timer, to be an R counter. And I did really well a minute ago. So um, we also have someone who puts the program together, if you like, an MC. We have a chairman for the business meeting. So all these are roles that you will learn to become proficient in. And they in. rotate every time. Exactly. You get a chance to do it. And in fact, one of the roles after all these years that I still have difficulty with is the timer. Uh, you and my wife Because are I get so enhanced with the various subjects that the people are talking about that I forget to look at the time. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm playing catch up. But generally the speeches are anywhere from four to six minutes, Correct. four to five to seven, yep. somewhere. And it's not like you have to write a huge speech or that it has to be the manifesto in order for it to be usable at the club. It's just a getting up on your feet and becoming comfortable, right? That's right. And the most important aspect of Toastmasters is everything we do is evaluated. So when you give a speech, a fellow Toastmaster will evaluate your speech, tell you what you've done well, 
tell you where you could have one or two areas to improve. They're only suggestions, not commandments. And then tell you once again what you did well overall. The idea of the evaluation is to make you want to come back and do better, but it's not a criticism. We do not critique anybody. You're absolutely right. And what I, I coined this phrase probably 35 years ago, not long after I started. This is an evaluation. This is what I heard, this is what I saw, this is how it affected me. If you want to change the way you affect me, do this. If you want to continue to affect me, do this. Now it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do either. Exactly. Or just ignore me completely. But it's not a matter of saying you did this wrong, you did this right, but rather this is how it affected me. And that's the difference between evaluation and critique. Oh. Both of us are qualified to critique because mm -hmm. that's our business. But a majority of the people are not. But everybody, even those of you who are listening right now, are evaluating what you've heard. Correct? Correct. And deciding whether or not you want to be a part of this great organization. So that's an important facet. So people don't feel, oh my goodness, they're going to come in and tear me apart. We're not in the business of tearing people down, correct? No, that's correct. When we look at a club meeting, that's a wonderful thing. But what about going outside the club? What, what opportunities are for people to go beyond the club? Well, I think first and foremost, I'm a Rotarian as well as a Toastmaster. I love the Rotary movement, but so many Rotary meetings don't have good guest speakers and don't know where to find them. If you are a Toastmaster, what a wonderful opportunity to go and give a speech sell the benefits of Toastmasters to Rotarians, interact with people who have different ambitions, different routes. You grow as a person by stepping outside your comfort zone. Take the opportunity. If someone asks you to give a speech because they know you're a Toastmaster, take it because it will develop your confidence, your ability to speak to people with a different mind. We encourage members to go from one club to another to experience because no two clubs are the same. I no two that. clubs do the same way. There's no right and wrong way. There are just different ways. And the broader your spectrum of experience, the more confident you are, the better you will be able to develop your talents. I've visited over 400 clubs myself and have never by the way, ever not been anything but greeted warmly. Just absolutely fantastic. But there's contests and there's opportunities for area contests, division contests, district contests, correct? Yes, and international. We run the World Championship of Public Speaking, which is held in every August, uh, where we have speakers from all around the world um, compete. And uh, it's a wonderful competition. But in your club, we have competitions just, and the people say, why do we have competition? Well, to improve your skills, you need to speak against the best in your club. And then those speakers need to speak against the best of other club speakers, which is done at area, and so on right up to district. You improve your skills by challenging yourself to speak against the best opposition you can find. Mike? I would like to give you an opportunity to talk directly with our audience and tell them what you would like them to hear, maybe questions I haven't asked you yet, things you think are important for them. And remember, this will be a worldwide audience because this will go on the web, as you mentioned, with marketing today, we're going into the web. So what would you like to tell them? Take about two minutes to do so. Well, I think the main thing is go and see for yourself. Visit a club. If you get invited by a Toastmaster or if you see an advert for the local Toastmasters chapter in your area, go and see what it's about. Many people have a misconception about Toastmasters. Some people think that all we do is raise a glass and have a, give a toast. That's yeah. not what we do. Um, but find out for yourself. And don't just go to one club. Perhaps the one club you go to might not just meet your needs. Go to two or three and make a choice because as I said before, each club is different. The difference that it will make in your life is up to you. But for me, it changed my way of thinking. It improved my relationship with my family. It improved my relationship with my career because I learned to listen rather than dictate. And it increased my ring of friendship. I have friends all around the globe 
I would never have had if I hadn't have joined a Toastmasters organisation. But it's not for me to judge. Go and judge for yourself. Mike, you brought up a very important point. Don't just visit one club. Go visit several. My ego got in the way. Five years before I actually joined, I went to a club and I gave a speech, or actually it was a table topics. I won table topics and this group happened to be a group of engineers who were not great communicators, wonderful people, and I got to know them five years later, but I won the table topics for the night. I was a marketeer, I'd done some public speaking, and oh, you're great, you're, and I got thinking, why do I need this group? I'm better than everybody here. My ego got in the way. I didn't think that I could be that much better until five years went by and another guy buttonholed me, took me to his club. It was a different experience completely. And I saw there's something here, something I need, something I can build a future on. So that point you just brought up, if we bring nothing else up, that's a very important point. I think, I think the opportunity to go and share your experience too. Once you become a Toastmaster, you are a role model for others who will see things that you do that they would aspire to be able to do. So please, when you become a Toastmaster, remember, everybody is a mentor, everybody is on show. Make sure you put your best foot forward because you will have an influence on other people's lives that you may never know. How long have you been in the organization now, Mike? I, uh, uh, it's been quite a while. 26 years in so, August. So I beat you by 10. Oh, yes. See, I'm a slacker. I didn't get to be international president. Well, I never joined <laughs> to be international president. I didn't even Nobody know. Nobody ever does. No, I didn't know we had such a creature when I joined the club. Um, but it's amazing. Toastmasters will present you with opportunities and they present you with the experience to accept those opportunities. To everyone, I say, when opportunity knocks on your door, take it. It may never come your way again. And how do you know if you can or you can't until you try? That's what Toastmasters encourages you to do. There's so much to tell you about this great organization, but if you go to toastmasters.org, there's a place there, it's a locator, you can go in there, you can find a club near you and several clubs near you. Here in the Tampa area, they're all over the place. Go visit a few of them. See what you can find. Make sure it matches you and fits you because there are great opportunities out there, are there not? Oh, definitely. I mean, we know of companies that have now incorporated Toastmasters in their staff assessment. So they say, yes, we're happy for you to be a member, but you know, for the first two or three years, we want to see how you're doing in Toastmasters as part of your assessment. I wasn't aware of that. Yep. But I know there are a number of companies, I know Nationwide Insurance, Progressive, yes. a number of companies have in-house Toastmaster clubs. Correct. And that makes a lot of difference if you can learn to be a better communicator in those organizations or any. Communications is the most important thing that you can do to make yourself a better listener, leader, and communicator. Exactly being able to bundle those together. And this organization does that, Mike. It does, but always in an atmosphere of fun. And it is fun. I've been to district conferences and there's all these different leadership roles that you can assume. You don't get paid for them, not in money. No. But the value you'll get from them is tremendous. I can't tell you, other than my military training, my Toastmaster Club experiences are probably those that I value most. College falls way behind. It wasn't yeah. as much fun. <laughs> I don't think I got as much out of it. Yes, I have to admit uh, I'm probably the same as you. Um, but really, it is uh, an experience not to be missed. Try it. Uh, try before you buy. But definitely take the opportunity to see if it's for you. Mike Storkey, President of Toastmasters International. Thanks for being with us today. I wish you Godspeed on your trip around the world, and uh, you'll have plenty of extra of those points you get for flying. So come on back and see us again. Oh, I would love to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Hodges. This is Spotlight on Government. You're unique, you're special, you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know, and we'll see you very soon on the next Spotlight on Government. Again, Mike.
Thanks so much for being